there. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thanks for joining me for another craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time we can relax and craft together. So tonight I'm hoping to finish a couple things. So we have our tatted letter T zipper pouch. I need to sew the lining uh, back closed for that. I have my jean jacket. This is what we're going to work on first. My jean jacket where we had that extra letter T. We are hand stitching that to the jacket. And I have the swan zipper pouch from a zillion years ago. I need to, I, I need to repair it. So I sewed the zipper on wrong. So I want to pick that apart and re-sew that. So lots of little things. We are going to hopefully finish up some projects today and that's what's making my brain happy. <laughs> so, all right, let's get going. All right, so I just had to leave all this out. Look at the craziness that is is my desk right now. Ugh, and it's driving me batty, <laughs> all of this stuff over here. Uh, so I'm happy that I'm in the finish it up project stuff because all this needs to get packed away. Um, but let's take a look at this again. So here's Here's the zipper pouch that we finished. Well, except for the inside. So this is all applique on our little tatted tee. This again came from that vintage, uh, that vintage book that we downloaded from the antique pattern library.org. Uh, completely illegible <laughs> as far as instructions. I mean, not illeg illegible. You can see, you can see the, the text and everything, but Holy cow, that was hard to follow as far as instructions. This one that actually looks nice, like it looks like a, a letter T. Uh, I just looked at the picture and kind of rewrote the <laughs> instructions. Um, this one, we attempted to follow the instructions, except for this, this part, I couldn't understand the instructions at all. So I did it the same as the one that I made up. And you can see it's, it's missing some, uh, like the little, little like bits of the T right there. It's missing, missing those. Um, <laughs> I did not understand that pattern at all. So anyway, uh, it ended up looking okay though. So uh, I've been, uh, we decided to use it and I'm stitching it down onto my little jean jacket here. This is kind of more like a shirt. Uh, my husband got this for me with the sole purpose that I would stitch things onto it, like I'd embroider onto it. So we've already embroidered this little tiny uh, acorn and we applicate it to uh, near the collar there. A nice little, kind of like a little hidden guy there. We've, we've put this little heart on the sleeve embroidery. So this was also embroidered first and then applique. And so this is gonna be our third thing on uh, this jacket. And uh, uh, we're, we're halfway done. So we've gone around this part and down to the bottom and around. And now we have uh, this whole half and this whole entire side, it's still pinned on there. So I'm gonna do that first. So then this project will be done. Uh, second thing tonight, I want to finish this. So this is done, but to, to applique this on, we actually undid the lining. So I need to sew that back shut and that's why I have the sewing machine here tonight. Uh, and then, since we have the sewing machine out and if we had more time, I thought I'd try and unpick this um, zipper pouch that I made. This is when we made it on that curved zipper or the, like the curved edge. And I turned the zipper the wrong way. Like I squished the zipper the wrong way when I sewed it, which made this huge big pucker. And I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to pick out, I probably have to pick out just that area, hopefully. I'll have to turn the whole thing right side out again or inside out again and then pick that out and then maybe I can just sew that part. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm hoping to get all that stuff done tonight. I am definitely in the finish all the things mode. Uh, that's what uh, January is gonna be here for me is just let's finish up this stuff. And then February, we will be starting, here, I'm gonna zoom you guys down here. Uh, February, we will be starting the alphabet, uh, the ABC 
animals, we're going to do an ABC stitch along. And uh, I'm going to make a quilt that we'll, we'll auction off again, like we did with the koala quilt. So more info on that later. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, that is the plan. So January in my head is still like a reboot. <laughs> I need to clear my mental capacity of all these these projects, basically. So I'm, I'm really happy with um, that we're actually finishing these, these um, little tatted pieces. So some people asked today, like, what can you do with, with tatting? And we've been talking about that a little bit. Um, I'm going to look up a whole pile more images and stuff tomorrow, I think. Um, I'll probably do another TikTok with, like, just things you can make out of tatting besides all the little snowflakes. So I've been making, I've been making all these snowflakes. But, you know, we already have two more things. We did this tatted, like, these tatted letter T's which was kind of fun and you know I'm, I'm using it as an applique uh, so an applique onto a zipper pouch so it could just be like kind of decorative fun like that and now I'm doing the same thing on on here so that's a little bit a little bit different than I think the norm of tatting I think traditionally it's used for like edging and uh, anywhere you'd use lace so like a you know, even like wedding dress dresses or like just trim or like um, borders on on things. Uh, nowadays, you can use like it's used as, as jewelry and earrings and um, someone mentioned bookmarks the other night. So I'm I would love to just start googling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty new. Oh, rabbit meerkats and crowns, bookmarks, necklaces. Uh, yeah, so, uh, um, and you can starch them too, so it can stand up upright and stuff too. So you, re you really could do a bunch if you, if you start brainstorming, I think. So I do want to um, do some research on it a little bit, like, dive into lean into that idea a little bit and just see what I can find on the interwebs of uh, what other people have done because uh, I'm curious as a beginner I, I'd like to do more than snowflakes <laughs> uh, even though I think just having a whole house of snowflakes hanging around would be pretty dang cool <laughs> but yeah um, oh, Gina says you can make some edging and stitch to the collar. That's true. So yeah, you can make like some really pretty decorative collars. Um, you could just do that without stitching it to anything. It could just be like a pretty like necklace collar thing. But yeah, that would be a, a neat addition. I know you can like add it to like edges. So like if we poked holes in here or stitched holes or whatever, we could have like this decorative edging. Um, yeah, I'd like to kind of find ways other than like jewelry and the traditional thing like you can make like bedspreads and, and all that sort of stuff too so very like lacy pretty things but I, I'm curious like how far that extends I mean it can extend however much you think but I'm, I'm curious what exists out there that people have done so and I haven't I haven't dug much into that yet so I think I'm gonna try and do that tomorrow Because a few people have asked, and I'm I want to know too. So I think I will I'll dig in a little bit. <laughs> yep, pin cushions. That's gotta go on our our list of. Uh, I know I keep saying that, but our list of like little small projects we can work on and stuff. All right, so I'm uh, finished with the side. So got that done just now. I don't think I need to go on the inside at all. This is gonna hold it plenty. Um, so, okay, now I want to go around this, but I don't know. It's looking weird. Like, I think it's, does it look further out than, than this side? I think it kind of does, but maybe it's just, as I stitch, maybe I just got to pull these loops open a little bit more so it looks like this. Maybe let's do this first loop, kind of try and pull it open as much as this one is, and then, then I'll, like, reassess, like, if I need to move anything. So it's just kind of going to stretch that down with my finger and just hold it there I think 
So I don't think this will take us much longer. We just got to go around this edge here. Uh, yep, uh, very good. Definitely keep reminding me uh, that, that we want to do a pincushion um, project of some sort. There, I'm just kind of trying to push this little arc down. There we go. Holding it in place. Oh, uh, your friend has a tablecloth tatted. It's amazing. Ugh, awesome. So I do, I did bring home, I don't know if I talked about this yet, but um, when I was by my parents, my mom grabbed my great, great grandmother on my dad's side, um, which wasn't traditionally the crafty side. Like in my head, it's my, my mom's side is like my grandma always like crocheted and I have her her crochet hooks and I've been making like the doilies that she's been making forever but this is actually on my dad's side my great great grandma she was the one that did that little tatted piece that's hanging on the wall but she also apparently did this crocheted tablecloth it almost looks like tatting it is very delicate but I'm pretty positive it's crochet <laughs> it's funny tatting and crochet really look similar um unless you kind of know what you're looking for I think um so I do, I do crochet, so I, 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 I can tell, um, could tell the difference. Uh, so it's, it's crocheted, but it's very delicate, um, like with teeny tiny doily thread, like cotton doily crochet thread, uh, smaller than what I had. So I actually, I actually also acquired my grandmother on, on my mom's side, her crochet stuff and including her crochet thread. So including this, actually, this is, this is my grandma's. So this is my grandma's thread right there. Um, but I'm like, oh, I, I must have some thread because um, we are going to, it actually needs repairs, this, this tablecloth. So I'm like, oh, I can come and crochet and re repair it or, you know, see what we need to do with it. And all this crochet thread that I had from my uh, grandma on my mom's side, I thought for sure we'd have something that would work but it's actually so much smaller than the stuff that I brought home so I need to make a Joann's run and see if they have even smaller like cotton crochet thread and uh, um, I'm gonna let this out and see see where we're at here um, but just to see the size because there's no labels on it on any of the stuff that I have so I need to go to Joann's and just kind of compare But, uh, and I'll like film that and stuff too, so you guys can like help me out and whatever, trying to get this, this right size of, of thread. But the whole thing was that this tablecloth that is completely delicate and ugh, it had to take thousands of freaking hours to do, um, it needs repairs. So like a few, it's like a bunch of little circles. So it's almost as if you would take, you know, uh, like a snowflake pattern like this almost, and then put a zillion, um, a zillion of them next to each other, but crocheted. And some of those joins are kind of falling apart or like there's a whole like inner area that's apart. So theoretically, Oh God, it's gonna be like performing surgery. Like I have to, so with crochet, different than tatting, tatting is a, a lot of knots. Crochet is more like um, loops within loops. So if you, like a chain stitch. So if you pull a loop, all the loops are gonna to wanna to come apart. That does not happen in tatting, <laughs> but it happens in, in crochet. And uh, there's so many little tiny bits that have been torn off that they look like subtle. They look like barely any, like, like there's no damage, but I think I'm going to have to go into each one of those and tie the ends into a knot so they don't keep like pulling out. So I'm going to have to go through the whole thing and like tie off each of those tiny little ends, which is going to take forever. Uh, and then 
then I have to, then I'll go back in and try and recreate the crochet on all of those little, little bits. So I think I have that right here. Let me show you guys this quick. So I have it, I have it in a, <laughs> I have it in, in this bag here. Uh, so this is, this is that tablecloth. I'm not gonna, not gonna take it out all the way, but, uh, you can see, so this is, like, here's an end that needs, needs repair. So it's, it's, this is actually a major repair on this, but it's a lot of tiny little bits like this that just need to be tied off. But isn't this interesting? So this looks a whole lot like our, our tatting, right? It looks really similar, um, similar thread, similar look, but this is actually crocheted. Um, and I can tell because all of these little stitches are more, they're like chains together versus, versus knots. And I'm not sure you'd be able to get like this sort of look in tatting. Actually, you probably could, I just don't know how. Um, but, but this is crochet for sure. Uh, so I need to go in and repair it all. And then I need to actually crochet back little pieces. So this is a major, major project uh, that will be, <laughs> being worked on at some point here. So we'll be making a trip to Joanne's for that, but man, so I, I, I can, uh, this all, this, uh, this all started from when you were saying, um, I forget who said it, but, um, with the tatted, tatted tablecloth and I'm, I'm betting it's probably pretty similar to that, but dang, zillions of hours had to go into it. Zillions and zillions. Yep, uh, crocheted with, um, yeah, using a steel hook. And I actually have my grandma's um, tiny crochet hook. So this is, this is probably what I would use for it. I do have one that's a little, gosh, even a little bit smaller than this too, but I have it, um, I'm working on a project with it and it's in my bag. I'll have to go find that again, but I may need to use the smaller one. So I'll be like crocheting with this itty bitty crochet hook to, to fix those. Um, someday, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not quite jumping in all, maybe that's why I'm like eager to finish all these projects, because I got like a looming project like that, but I think it's just gonna be really fun, like a restoration project that just sort of appeals to me a lot. Oh, Kimberly says, I love these, those crocheted tabletops. Oh, on top of a, a colored tablecloth. Ooh, yes, exactly. So yes, so this would be like the decorative little bit on top. And I think my mom's actually used it before, like for Thanksgiving, uh, just to like lay it on top of, yeah, like a, a brighter color underneath. And it's just like a fun decorative special thing. And, you know, great grandma made it. So that makes it extra special. And uh, So anyway, that is... Uh, to do <laughs> that's that's on my radar so step one is I need to bring it I'm gonna actually bring it in the bag and I actually might bring all my whole bin of um, like I have a sterilite bin filled with my grandma's thread that's like this but it's all like white and cream um, and I might go to Joanne's just to compare that with um, just to compare the the cotton thread at Joanne's with the thread that that I have for my grandma because none of it's labeled so you know people have been asking is, is that size 10 like cotton crochet thread I have no idea because I have no idea what the size is so I want to investigate um, thread sizes while I'm there and then also hopefully find um, thread small enough that, that matches that tablecloth and then, then I'll get some of that or I'll at least know what to look for in order because I'll have some sort of size some thickness of, of thread relation um, in my in my head. So I don't know. There is a Joanne trip needing to happen. Um, I think we're in lockdown again. Not lockdown, but I think um, I think our mask mandate is back back up today, which is fine. I'd wear a mask anyway. But um, just just planning the trip in my head. <laughs> I don't go many places anymore, so it's a whole whole thing. Um, but yeah, I'd love to do that soon, just because I need to know. I, I really want to know, like, the thread type. 
Man, even though I'm itching to finish up these projects, I am feeling, like, excited about starting new ones. Sometimes I'll just get on the, like, no new projects, I can only finish, finish these, but I have been, like, super excited about starting new things, too. But these are looming, all these, these other projects. So I'm, I'm feeling really good that I'm not going to have, like, the clutter of, of these small projects done. Oh, okay, so Justin says, for reference, I think the thread, the T, is made with, um, to my right, looks like a size 10. Oh, okay, so I do think that this is, like, this feels, like, on the thick side of what my grandma's th thread is. So I know that she has a little bit thinner, like, half the size, too. Um, so there's a whole variety I have on cone or on spools like this. So I know she has some that's like half that size, but it's still not as small as my great grandma's thing. One was close, but not quite. So I need to need to figure that out. But yeah, so I need to I need to just educate myself. So that's why I wanted to go to Joanne's and just be like, what are the sizes of these? And then I can make notes on them, like pin pin the size to it or something. All right, I think this is my last stitch here. We got this letter T on. I did shape the end a little bit more and like shape these so they'd mimic these a little bit more. And I think by doing that, it made it a little bit shorter, which is good because I, I, it felt like it was just kind of like longish. But, um, oh, it, it is a 10. So Rock and Robin is saying that this is a 10. Um, yeah, you can probably just tell, like if you're for people who use it a lot, can probably just tell just based on the size of what this is and approximately how many stitches and stuff. So, all right, so size 10, that's a good, that's a good start for me. It's nice going to Joann's with a, with an agenda though. So you're not just like browsing around. It's like going to Target with an agenda. So you're not just buying tons of stuff. So I'm just going around that spot one more time. Uh, and then I think we'll just tie the knot on the front here and I'll just pull it to the back. Again, I'm not really worried about my extra threads hanging out on the back just because um, this pocket's gonna be closed and we'll theoretically not really be using it. So I don't really need to protect the back, I don't think. I'm just trying to tie a knot. Almost out of thread here again. Let's see how I do here. Okay, good. Yep, so I'm just gonna pop that to the back and then come back up front here. Oh, yay, totally getting a project done. All right, there's gotta be a scissors. There we go, two scissors hiding down here. Oh, you just bought two, two of those spools. Yeah, I, I mean, like this is a very big spool. I know they come smaller. I'll probably end up buying some more tatting supplies for myself there because I'm not going to be able to resist that. All right, let's get this guy buttoned back up and we have added another element to our silly little jean house coat here. <laughs> it's cute. It's so silly. Okay, I need to, let's fluff this out here for a sec. There we go. So here's what uh, this looks like so far. So we have three elements now. We have the acorn, the letter T. <laughs> I think that looks awesome there. And then the uh, little heart on the sleeve. Um, one thing I do wanna do for sure with this, I mean, we'll just keep adding more fun appliques and, and embroideries and stuff to this just over time, I think. Uh, but what I do want to do is I'm going to get that, I, I mentioned that I'm going to get that, I have, I've ordered like one of those speed weave, um, darning tools. I've been like eyeballing one of those forever and I got one for Christmas, but it's taking forever to come. Uh, this side of the sleeve has like built in, <laughs> um, holes, <laughs> like it came with the shirt. Uh, like a new shirt, like they put these holes in, but I'd love to repair them, like fake repair them since, you know, if this is the intention was to have it not repaired, but like, I think I'm going to repair them with the speed weave. There's one, like a hole down here too. I would love to just like put all of that, um, darning and like darning, fixing some of these things. Although actually like that's what the appliques could do too. Like we can make 
like there wasn't a hole under here, but like we could have put that like right here to cover cover this hole. So that's another option, but that's for sure something I want to do with this this shirt. So if we're ever working on something and you think, oh, that's that would look good on the shirt, <laughs> let me know. Like the tatting, like a tatted uh, collar. I like that idea. Um, but yeah. So anyway, this guy's done for now. Ugh, that's excellent. So all right. Next project on the docket for tonight. Um, let's finish up this feller. So all we need to do here, dang, we're gonna have so many finished projects tonight. Uh, have you seen where the line holes with other, other pattern fabrics? Mm, I think I'm missing part of that question. Oh yeah, all the all the craft stores are having huge sales now. That's a good point. The other thing I want to get there, I was talking about this today, is some waste um, fabric for cross stitch. I've never used it before, but it's where you can cross stitch onto other fabrics. It's like it's like cross stitch like Ada fabric, uh, you know, where where you can see all the little holes to cross stitch, but you actually stick it or somehow get put it on another piece of fabric like the jean jacket, for example, and then you stitch right through this fabric, but then you can pull out all the little threads of that fabric and you're just left with the cross stitch on whatever that back fabric was. So I'd love to do that. Um, so I'd like to, that's on my, <laughs> on the uh, Joanne's agenda is, is that as well. All right. The, we picked this out with the seam ripper. I'm just gonna kind of clean it up a little bit before sewing it. But all we have to do is sew this shut. I opened it up so we could have access to the back um, while we while I stitch this on. Oh, oh, Rabbit Meerkat is saying water soluble material that dissolves is also an option. That's right. That's that exists too for cross stitch. Um, oh, and I have um, I have the I have sticky fabricel or the what do they call it now? Stick and stitch. I have some of that stick and stitch washable like fabric paper stuff too so theoretically I could just print a grid on there and use that that'd be interesting anyway cross stitch might be on the agenda again too that's kind of popping up top of mind lately that the darning we're gonna just have fun with all sorts of crafts coming up here I think Okay, so that's a little cleaned up. I don't have to press it really, it's still kind of in place. All I'm gonna do is just go do put a back tack there, so forward and backwards, and then I'm gonna just sew, top stitch, hold these together. I mean, all my stitch marks are still there, and then we'll end it there, and then he'll be done. So all right, let's get to the sewing machine. Haven't been in sewing machine land in a while, so let me scooch you guys over. Uh, there we go. Okay, so, ooh, TikTok, you are gonna just see. <laughs> You're gonna be blurry. All right, we're gonna go like that because my sewing machine wants to be in focus and nothing else. Um, ooh, where's the foot for this? Dang, you guys, it's been like a month since I've used the sewing machine. That's like crazy town. It's been just on the floor this whole whole time. Ooh, I need my stiletto. Let's get one of those out. Hold this in place. It's coming back to me. Actually, I'm gonna get, oops. There we go. I'm gonna get my leader out of the way here. So scissors. Okay. Now I'm feeling it. Now I'm, now I'm back in it here. Okay, so I'm gonna just go forward and backwards here. Oops, my little guys in there. Okay. I'm on this vintage machine that is from, oh gosh, what year was it again? I think 1938 is when this, this machine was made. All right. Now I'm going forward again. I'm just going to fold this edge in. Sometimes by just like keeping it taut back here. Oh, you guys can't see anything. Hold on. There we go. Eh, you're gonna be a little bit blurry for a moment here, but we'll go back. Oh, 
Okay. So there's the end. I'm just gonna go backwards a little bit there again. That just kind of locks it all in place. It's like tying a knot and sewing, basically. All right, let's take that off the machine. I'm gonna scoot you guys back over here a little bit. Okay. So that lining hole is now closed there. And we can stuff it back in and this guy is done too. So uh, now I know why this is making me so happy. Uh, it's because this is going to be my tatting bag. I, I um, put this letter T on so it would be, it would represent T for tatting and for Thomas, which was my last name, and it is tatted. So this is my tatting bag, and that's what has like blown up all over my my table here is all my tatting stuff. So after tonight, I will put everything back in here. Ugh, that's gonna feel good. So I'm gonna have a clean table again, and now I'll just be able to grab my tatting bag and have all of the tatting supplies, like all of my little projects. Man, I got like this project still, so. Um, just these are these are less projects as in like things I need to finish kind of like how this was all my tatting stuff right now is more just like relax time <laughs> I, I, I have no agenda to finish those quickly or, or anything um, so that's just like for fun um, all right he's done next up do I name mach my machines I don't name my machines we we have kind of named them here and there like we kind of call this one the steampunk sewing machine <laughs> just because it's it's super angular and it's got this cool like black um crinkle finish is what it's called uh where it, it it's just like almost like hammered i just need to put some more bits and bobbles and stuff all over it and then it would be like a perfect steampunk like sewing machine all right so this I kind of have to figure out. So I know what I did wrong. I just have to undo it. So see where this is just kind of puckering quite a bit. Oh, you're always on the lookout for the smallest bag you can to find for the tatting project. I know like really for tatting, for like to travel, I'd probably only need something that big. It'd be kind of fun to make a, a bag that big because it, it literally just needs to hold, hold this. <laughs> and uh, if I'm feeling like it maybe just a, a little scissors but actually just like the needle threader with that little um my needle threader has this uh cutting edge on just throwing that in there and like a needle um would do the do the job really so I would only need like a tiny little thing so maybe I'll have to make this will be just like my craft bag for tatting that has like instructions and lots of stuff but I'll need like a travel I, I call it a, like an emergency craft project so um an emergent like if I need to bring if I need to put a craft project in my pocket because I'm gonna be somewhere for a while that's an emergency craft project I have a, a couple emergency craft projects in my in my bag and I have one in the car so if I'm stuck somewhere for a while I know I'll at least um, have an emergency craft project and I think tatting would work perfect for that okay um oh your tatting is beautiful thanks so much i am i'm just learning and i am completely loving it it's been so much fun so far to um to do to do tatting all right so i think the first thing i need to do is open this up and turn it right side out again Ugh, this is gonna be a big pain i think to fix this but i'm not happy with how it is now and we spent so much time embroidering it and doing it's all hand quilted um this is kind of the piece that i learned hand quilting on i know it kind of looks like a, a diaper a little bit but i don't care um but yeah so i feel like it's like an important piece for me it's like a nice learning piece i love these these learning pieces are my favorites i think just because, I don't know, I feel like the most of me is in it. Just because I'm learning all along the way. I'm thinking about a lot of things as I'm doing it. I don't think I'm getting any of this thread here. Um, so I, I really do like those learning pieces. I always try and learn something new on every project that I work on. 
even if, if the learning is just like getting better at a skill, that's still like learning how to do that. So I didn't want to not really use this bag just because I messed up the, the zipper. So I'm going to try and fix that. So opening up the bottom like I did with the other, other zipper pouch. This zipper pouch is a little bit more in depth than this one because it has uh, box corners and we've done, we've made it on this curve, the zipper is on a curved edge. I've never done that before. Um, so that was pretty awkward sewing it, I think, but um, I don't know, learn stuff. I messed it up. I think the zipper has to be folded towards the lining and I folded it towards the outside. I think that's where my error happened. But I remember it being pretty awkward because of that curve. Oh, look, this is busted. I must have stepped on it or something. Boo! Oh, well. Poor little seam ripper. Almost there. So after we fix the zipper, we'll have to sew this bottom up the same way we did with the with this guy. Oops! Ah, don't want to poke a hole into the fabric, which I think I almost did there. All right, that should be good. I don't like having an exposed uh, seam ripper here, but I don't know if it's going to close anymore. That little broken bit. Oh well. Okay, so now to access the seam that I need to pick apart for the zipper, I need to turn it inside out again. So this is really poofy too because there's there's batting in in this uh, front, the exterior piece. Yeah, I folded this. I folded the zipper towards the the exterior side instead of the lining side. I, that's that's what went wrong here. So let's see. I think I can. Ugh, and it's just so awkward because of the curve. It looks like I even had to sew it again. Like I had to start and stop a little bit. So maybe I can keep this part where it looks like I've sewn up to here and just start picking out here. Yeah, we're gonna do this one side at a time. So I'm gonna do this side, see how it works, and then maybe I'll even turn it right side out again just to make sure it worked, and then then we'll do we'll do this side. So, all right, seam ripper. Using a lot, there's a lot uh, the past few days. He's happy to get some use in, and oh my God, these stitches are so small. I think I'm gonna start up here. I'm just gonna pick them one at a time, just because this is kind of an awkward little section here. So thanks for hanging out with me as I like go through all these projects. This is great. So um, we'll hopefully finish this today. And uh, hey, Marsha, and uh, that'll be like three little projects done. Ugh, and then this will be off of my stack of repair work. So um, what this means, I think the next thing we could work on, like again, um, this month I'm just hoping to like get through, finish up a bunch of these little low hanging fruit projects that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, so I think the next one I'd like to try is uh, cutting the um, that sweater down the center. And what did we call that again? A, a steak, like doing, like, is that a verb? Like, I, <laughs> I still haven't looked up steak yet. I know a bunch of you guys talked about that the other day, but uh, basically I have a, a sweater, like a really nice wool sweater that my mom knit from a pattern. Um, and no one's really ever worn it because it's just, you know, fits a little funny. Um, but I think 
but I, like I, what I want to do is turn it into a cardigan. So I want to cut up the center. It's pretty, it's like got cables, it's got all sorts of stuff. Oh, Amy uh, says I'm trying to finish projects too. Yeah, it just seems like the time. <laughs> I'm like, okay, they're getting done now. But yeah, so I just need to cut down the center, but probably sew. It sounds like you guys were giving me suggestions, like I should sew down the middle and then sew some edges. You know what? I think it's going to be hard to sew down the middle, actually. It'll be interesting. Uh, it's, I don't know. It'll be interesting. We'll have to analyze it and, and figure it out. Okay, there. Now this is coming apart a little bit. Ugh, the zipper's right there, too. Yeah, the zipper's open all the way. Um, still going to take a while to get all these dang little stitches out of here. But yeah, so I think we'll work on that next. So theoretically tomorrow, which means I got to do some research on that. Okay, this is just so bulky here. It's not being fun. I'm going to start picking from down here and work my way up. And I don't want to, it's kind of like a lightweight white fabric that I don't want to accidentally poke a hole in either. I feel like my eyeballs aren't working. I'm gonna have to get real close here. There we go. I just need to be a little bit closer. I feel like <laughs> being on the phone and, and the computer, I my best vision is right here up close. And actually like embroidery, all of it is like from here to here. <laughs> it's like my vision length. Um, but yeah, so then we'll work on that project. I do have some jeans I want to hem. I don't know. Maybe I can do that on my own. <laughs> I have an article up on how to do that. Um, they're like significantly long. Like they're like eight inches too long or something ridiculous. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I was going to put together a whole list of my unfinished projects. I think there's some quilts from last year that we were working on a lot that I need to finish the backs of. Then we can um, uh, pin it together, baste it together so we can get that get things quilted. So that's just, that's prep, but the prep is part of the project. However, the third week of the month here, we will be um, stitching the embroidery of the month. So that's our penguins embroidery. So we'll be doing some embroidery yet this month, which will be great. Ugh, gosh, just picking this out makes me think that this is going to be a tomorrow project, too. But I think I almost got it. Ugh, it's this little bit. Let's see if I can get it from the inside. not this annoying to pick apart stuff, I don't think. This is why I've let this sit for so long and not, not done anything with it, just because it was going to be such an annoying little job to take this apart. There we go. Now it's pulled apart. That's what I wanted to get. So there. <laughs> We did it. So that's that's all I need it to be. Um, you can see how I have the the zipper. So if it's it's flat like this, I can't I can't sew it because I need these to be get together to sew. And I've put it, I've bent it like folded it towards the outside. I need to actually fold it towards the inside. So towards the lining. So all I need to do is push it up like that. Probably get some pins. I have some clips. Let's get. Let's get um, my wonder clips out here. So I just need to push it up the other direction. Yeah, and we're, we're ready to do that now. So push it up here. Actually, I think I got to get the zipper out of the way. Ah, how do I do that? Let's do it from the inside. So I'm just going to move the zipper so it's just like two inches away. Not close, because then I won't be able to turn it right side out, but two inches away so it's just out of the way of me sewing. So let's fold that up this way. Now this is also going to be at a funny angle because it's a curved edge, but hopefully that won't affect it a lot. Or maybe I have to sew to here and then kind of angle out. 
I'm not quite sure. Let's just put a clip here and give it a go, I guess. <laughs> it's gonna be better than it was, I think. So let's let's just give it a try. It's an experiment. Let's do it. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see there on TikTok. Whew, I'm like sweating thinking about this this project. Maybe this is why I haven't done the jeans, the like hemming the jeans yet either. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and start and stop in that other seam here. So I'm just gonna sew a few stitches and then reverse. Again, that's kind of like locking in that um, little edge. Okay, now here's the challenge. Let's see if we can do it. So I, I think I am gonna angle it. So I'm gonna kind of go to here and then we'll We'll go that way a little. It just seems like it wants to do that a little bit. So let's ugh, hold all this down. Should maybe use a bigger seam allowance too. Okay, I'm gonna remove this. Let's get right up in there. And now I am gonna just kind of veer this way a little. I don't know. Have any of you guys stitched a? Um, curved zipper like this. It's definitely new to me, and I did it wrong the first time, obviously. Alright, so I'm just kind of aiming out this way now. And I think that's that. So I'm going to turn it right side out again. Uh, just to see if it worked. And even if it's just a little off, but close enough, better than the other side, I'm going to just call it a day. <laughs> Alright. The alphabet thing, is that something, oh, we are all gonna at home or just you. So, uh, Rock and Robin, so the alphabet thing, uh, um, and now I wanna make, I wanna do like oh, the tatted alphabet too, but, uh, so the alphabet thing is, uh, it's gonna be a stitch along. So you can definitely do it as well with me. So I will be doing it live here um, during the evenings, like how we are now. I'm, I'm live every day at 8.30 p.m. Central, uh, Monday through Friday. So the plan is the first two weeks of the month, uh, we stitch one of these letters. So what, what, what this is, is I have a whole alphabet of uh, embroideries that have cute little animals with it. So like the A has an alligator and the B has a butterfly. Uh, like the H has a hedgehog and, and, and that sort of thing. So it's like the cute little animal embroidered with the letter underneath. So I want to stitch the whole alphabet. We've had the alphabet for a while and it's, we've just never done a stitch along and, and it's time. I, I want to, I just want to do it. Um, so we will be, oh my God, it worked and it's so much better. <laughs> let, let me show you, let me, I'm going to, show you guys so you can compare the sides. But anyway, so we'll, we'll be stitching that next year. So uh, there's 26 letters. So it's actually gonna be like a 13 month project. We're gonna do two letters a month. So week one, we'll be doing, you know, letter A and week two, we'll be doing letter B. So each month, um, week one and week two, the first full week and the, the second full week, we will be stitching a letter. I'm also going to do it, uh, I'm gonna make it into a quilt using the quilt as you go method, which is where you can um, put the back on right away and quilt it like this right away. Uh, that's going to be, um, so w that's gonna be what I'm gonna be doing with it. So I'll be making it into a quilt as we go and then we'll be doing an auction for that as well when we're done, <laughs> like 13 months from now. It's crazy to think of a project that long, but you know, we've been doing other quilts here and they've been that long too. So it's really like a stitch along, but I am going to be making it into a quilt. Um, and I'll, I'll give instructions on how I'm going to do that too. So look how different this looks. So this is, this is, uh, me doing the zipper the correct way where I, where I, um, pointed it towards the lining fabric. I got all these extra threads now. This is where I accidentally pointed it towards the, uh, in the uh, outside fabric when when we were there. So look at how like bunchy this is here. We got a crazy thing and that's completely 100% gone now. Isn't that crazy? I was not expecting it to be 
that much of a difference. And man, look, we're we're even kind of like losing our curve here because of that too. I thought the curve was going to be more drastic, but it is going to be actually more square when we're done. Dang, that's good to know. So like next time we do a curve, like we can really exaggerate that thing, I think. Um, interesting. So anyway, let's let's do this other side. Um, I think I'll just go till we get that done tonight. I know we're we're um, getting to be time here, but I'm too far along with this, and I got the sewing machine out. I want to get this guy done. So we gotta fix that other side, which means I have to pick it out. Ooh, which side is it though? Now I should be able to tell, shouldn't I? I don't know. It's this one. It's this. Yeah, it's got to be that one. Yeah. Okay. So I got to pick out this side and uh, um, seam ripper, and we'll finish this this guy up. Wow, so different though, isn't it? <laughs> so next time I try, I'll just have to make that arc. Like I could have the arc start at the bottom, really, and have it be. I'm really, uh, Amy says amazing transformation. I'm really actually surprised how different that, that turned out. And I'm, I'm really happy that we're doing this. Uh, this is actually going to be my uh, uh, hand stitching, not hand stitching, my hand quilting supplies bag. So like this is gonna be my tatting bag. Um, and uh, this is gonna be my hand stitching bag. Uh, currently Celeste is asking if I can show the letter T. I can. I don't know if it's going to be make much sense. I do want to actually type this up and test it again, but like for an untested and crazy notes pattern, here it is. I know it's pretty illegible down at the bottom, but it's basically the reverse of what's up here. So you can take a screen grab of that. I know this is crazy town. I, I do want to rewrite this though. I actually want to rewrite the instructions for that whole alphabet. I think it would be so fun, but I'll, I'll type this up as well. I'm just holding it here. So if you guys wanted to, to screen grab it, um, but I, I do want to, I, I do want to do this <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, so, and it's just, I don't know if it's even legible, <laughs> but, and I, and I think I actually might make changes from what I did with it. I might, um, change how these joins are made. I, I need to do another test, but once I do test that out, I will, um, make, make an actual, like, written out pattern that I'll put up. And I'll just put that up for, for free and stuff too. But yeah, dang, that was that was a tough read. Uh, I think I put a link on YouTube and Facebook for that original pattern. So it's from the antique uh, antiquepatternlibrary.org. But you would never be able to find this without um, a direct link because there's like just oodles and oodles of books on on that antiquepatternlibrary.org uh, website. Um, but that's where the original one is. It's from 1915. I gotta get this way up close to my face again. Um, yeah, and uh, so someone asked on TikTok, and I, I want to do a post on this too. I don't really know the answer though yet. Um, what's a good beginning, like good beginner books for tatting? And if any of you guys know, I would definitely take suggestions. But what I do know is that antique pattern books are a hundred percent not the way to learn how to tat oh i am so happy i i um learned a few techniques and learned uh, like a few concepts before even opening up or like looking up that that pattern library book like the patterns are so cool and stuff in there but after attempting to try and do just this letter t which i'm like oh that'll be nice and simple just this little little thing Holy cow, I, it was just, it would have been so discouraging, I think, if that was, like, my intro um, to tatting. So I know what, what not to do, but it, at the same time, they're super fun, these vintage patterns. Like, they're fun to read, uh, but yeah, they're, they're hard, hard to do, because they just expect, expect a lot of things, and I'm sure they're not, like, checked and stuff, like, nice good patterns are, are nowadays and oh my god 
god, this is so tough to get this little seam ripped bit. Oh, I really want to finish this though, so we're going to stay and do this. Maybe I can pull it apart like I did last time. Just kind of pull at the seam. There we go. Expose the seam from the middle. That's probably how I should do it anyway. There we are. That's working. But yeah, so any any book suggestions I would totally take. And I'll, I'll, I'll do a post and then maybe a bunch of people will write in the comments there. I, I did look on Amazon for some books and I bookmarked a few, but I, you know, haven't bought them or tested them to see if like they made sense. Um, but they were pretty. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'd be curious the answer to that too. All right, so again, I'm gonna be t turning the, the zipper so it's pointing the other direction. Uh, pointing away from, oh, I think I need to make this hole a little bit bigger, away from the um, exterior fabric and towards the lining fabric. So this is the side without the zipper. This is where it's just um, like the edges here. Ooh, it looks like I cut this all crazy too. have enough edge there. Let's make sure that's out enough. Okay. All right, clip, you're up. Here we are. I think I want to sew this way. All right, and this isn't lined up very well either, so I think we're going to have a little bunching on the front. Whew, I'm scared. Let's give it a try. All right shimmy onto the machine again. All right, let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna start, I think, a little lower this time. Ugh, this is just, I have a whole stack of unfinished projects um, on this big, like, baker's bun rack. I love that thing so much. It's got, it's like one of those, like, literal bun rack that you'd see at a restaurant. And uh, uh, I store projects on there. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, but this has just been sitting on the top of it. I'm like, this tiny little nothing project where all I have to do is fix that zipper cannot be on that pile anymore. So I'm really happy that we're actually getting this done and figuring it out. And that is, you know, theoretically kind of working. I'm going in a little bit further just because that zipper is, it feels like it's maybe a little, um, little cut back a little much. So I'm, I'm angling out again. That seemed to work um, with the other side. Okay. So we'll go down here quite a bit more. Let's go to like here. Make sure we get that. Theoretically, I probably could go over that whole seam again, but this isn't going to get tons of wear and tear. It's just going to store my my stuff for uh, hand quilting. All right, so let's see. Actually, while I'm here, let's um, let's get this bottom sewn shut. Oh wait, no, I can't sew that shut yet. Sheesh! Oh man, I almost had a disaster. I can't sew that shut until I turn it right side out again. <laughs> that would have been bad. That would have been real, real bad. Oh yeah, Kimberly says, back in the day there were more sewing circles. So there was someone to teach others the tips and tricks. Yeah, so someone wrote it in the book and then <laughs> others were there to explain it, basically. Okay, let's push all of this out again. There's our little little box corner. So I still have to take all these little blue marks off, but I can do that. Um, later, that'll be fine. All right, let's just peek. Let's stuff this back in. <laughs> it's drastically different looking. Oh my gosh. So let's just close it up for a sec. Wow. I am uh, um, just so surprised at how less of an arc it has, but it's kind of pretty because it's going to, you know, theoretically the bottom is flat so it can stand up on its own. Uh, but man, first of all, I was thinking it'd be like a little bit lower 
and way more of an arc like it cut cut like this but I actually kind of like it I think it works just fine uh, I feel like a huge relief <laughs> I really do that these are flipped flip the right sides out now I'll, I'll go back and trim the little like extra pieces but uh, the, like the zipper is cute um Dang, I'm really happy with that. So let's let's finish it for real by sewing the inside shut, just like how we did with the uh, letter T zipper pouch. Oh man, this really has been sitting around a long time, and it and it took us forever to do because first of all we had to stitch it right, and we stitched this. I think we stitched this in 2019, you guys. In um, I think this was our first. This is actually our first embroidery of the month. Uh, which was December 2019, I think. I think that was the first one. So we stitched this then. <laughs> and then way later, like sometime in 2021, we started hand quilting it. So there's tons of hand quilting, like all these little bumps, that's all hand quilted. And then the back, we did this like little decorative hand quilting pattern. We did all that last year and then sewed it into this bag. And then it's just been sitting around like busted up, not busted, but you know, not pretty. Just a little, a little off with that zipper being wrong. Ugh. So this is like a real finished project, like after like three years. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. When you really start thinking about how unfinished <laughs> projects are, sitting around it's just crazy Where, how far back does this go all right right to there so we'll go a little further get that thread going on again i can't go back too far because i have those boxed corners kind of in my way look at this fun little jumping fox fabric oh this must have been we must have chose this fabric we did a fox embroidery um, of the month. I think that was August of last year. So that must have been when we turned this into a bag. It was probably in August. Oops. Yeah, you guys can see. Um, because that would have been a reason to choose this fox fabric, maybe? I don't know. Or I just thought it was cute. That could be too. Maybe I just thought it was cute and went with the swan. I think maybe that was it. Well, we're anyways we'll have it finished and that feels amazing i'm really happy we're cranking out all these little projects so three projects today you guys let's just take a look at them again and um relished in the finishedness of it all <laughs> that's this is just so nice to, to finally get some of these things done so we just gotta stuff the lining back in the lining also has box corners Oh, I guess this isn't really done. I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. So what I'm gonna do for, just cause it's, it's late, um, but what I'm gonna just do for this, it has all my water soluble marker lines. Uh, I'm just gonna get a little wet rag and I'm gonna just dab it on there. Um, I, I actually probably need to soak it a little bit. So I'm gonna take it with like a wet rag and like plop it all on there. And, um, yeah, so that'll be it. So I'll do that last little bit. We have some markings on the front too. I just trimmed those, trimmed these last little threads off. Now I'm getting real picky. I get more in perfectionist zone the later it gets at night. So I think I'm, I'm reaching that point now where I gotta take care of all the little bits, but there we go. This would be fun with a little tassel yet. I think we should make a little tassel for this at some point. We could make it um, just like a little embroidery floss tassel I think a pink one though so maybe we'll do that tonight or not tonight um tomorrow too but anyway there we got this guy done we got this guy done two cute zipper pouches and I just think this is so adorable this <laughs> little tee on the um my little jean coat as well <laughs> Awesome, you guys. So piles of projects done. That makes me super, super duper happy. Uh, yeah, and then tomorrow we will get, it's fell on the floor, but we have um, that sweater. So here's that sweater. This is what I want to cut down the middle and figure out how to, 
seal up the edge or whatever. And it, you know, you guys mentioned it's a steak or, or steaking or something like that. I'm gonna have to look up what that means for sure. Uh, I think I understood it from you guys explaining it like that you could actually knit along the edge or, or pick up stitches. I don't know if I'll do all that. It's it's on. It's got like some angled cable on in the middle. I don't know. This is gonna be a crazy situation, but I kind of love it. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, so we'll do some research. Oh, uh, Amy says you must have some tassels left over from from those Christmas things, and you're right, I do, and they're right behind me. Ah, okay, we could so put one of these tassels on tonight. Yet, yeah, let's let's just go, let's just go here again. <laughs> you guys are way up high now, but. Um, I have these three tassels. Oh, and, and then one is that 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 blue. Let's let's um let's just do this. <laughs> Maybe we'll just use the blue because I have it here. Or we should just like put all three of these on. These are all cute, aren't they? Should we just run a string through all of them and have them all on? Maybe just maybe these two. That's cute. Should we do that? Oh, you guys can't see. Oh, hold on a sec. I think we do that. Let's just do this tonight yet. I'm going to get a, a little bit of thread. I'll just use some of this blue that's hanging out here. Yeah. I think I'm just going to run a needle through there and grab these and just kind of tie it in a knot, right? I don't think I need to do anything else. Okay, so Noeline says, thank you, Alyssa, and just like stitch before cutting. So that, that seems to be um, what you guys, oh, there we go. Stitch it first before cutting the sweater each side of the cut line. So yeah, so that, so it sounds like stitch, stitch right down the center. So it's gonna be tough. It's gonna, that's gonna be tough too. It's gonna be tough you, do, using a sewing machine on that sweater because I gotta get the back out of the way and so it's gonna be a challenge, but it'll be fun. All right, so I'm gonna stick a needle through here. I'm probably not gonna get through perfectly in the middle, but who cares, it'll be close enough. And I, I do wanna snip off these extra, like we have this extra little tie on here. I'm just gonna snip it close to the knot. Cause I don't wanna snip the thing. Okay, I think, I, I think, I think that was fine. All right, so I'm just gonna string that through and we'll just kind of try and grab the middle here. Oh, pretty close. So I'm literally just thinking of tying this around. Like just, let's just go around here. So I think normally I, you'd put these on like a jump ring or something, but who cares, let's just do it. I think maybe I'll just go through these again. That'll kind of secure it maybe. Pull this tight. I'm sure, there's an actual strategy for how to do this, but um, all right. So I'm gonna just go in here again, and uh, I think I'm gonna just tie a knot uh, really close here, and we can probably tuck that in on the inside. And you know what? I think that's good enough, and we'll call it a day. Now it's really done with. Well, actually, we still have to get the um, the thread. I think blue and pink would be super cute for this but I just happen to have these two done already so that's like bonus points didn't have to make one all right so I think I'm going to just take each thread so the knots kind of on that white I'm going to just take the thread and go back through to the other side and just kind of trim it what I probably could do is actually come down into the blue like that Oops, there we go. And I'll trim, trim it there. So it's just part of the tassel then. Let's do the same thing with this one. So did this make a dent in, in my, uh, my bun rack? It definitely made it shorter because this is a kind of a bulky, bulky thing just sitting on the top. Did I get a weird knot in there now? Dang it. Of course I did. There we go. And I'm just gonna slide that down through 
the tassel as well. All right, throw that on the needle minder. So I, I'm not gonna brush these out like the, the other ones, I think, who cares? <laughs> there we go, a little extra decorative. Uh, bit to there. The white one's a little longer. I could almost snip it down, but now, see, I'm telling you, when it gets later, I get into perfection mode. I don't, I don't need to do that. This is fine just like that, but ugh. Okay, so that added just enough to this. <laughs> All right, great suggestion. I am really happy with that now. Little tassel on the end. It needed that little extra because it's, it's actually kind of, uh, this one's a little difficult to, I don't know, the zipper is just a little difficult to open and close, so that's that's perfect. <sighs> More stuff that we used up. That's good. So we have one extra little tassel from the holidays hanging out here that we'll have to use on, on something sometime. <laughs> uh, that'll be fun. All right, you guys. Thanks for sticking with me. I know we've gone over a little bit today. So tomorrow we'll do that steak thing. Uh, we'll figure out how to do that sweater. That's going to be a challenge. Uh, and I may need to do some prep beforehand. Like if I'm going to put like bias tape on the side, we may want to make that first so it's ready to go. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to do a little research for tomorrow. So we'll figure that out. But oh, that's going to be awesome to have that project done too. We are cranking them out, people. Love it. All right. So I will see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central with a nice clean table. I'm cleaning this up right now and uh, <laughs> we will work on that sweater. That is next project in line. All right, you guys, have a fabulous evening. Good night.